Today we're going to take a look at the Hewlett Packard Enterprise Synergy Data Systems designed for use in your enterprise, whether that's a small data center or whether it's a growing data center or a very large data center. Today we're going to be looking at a hardware aspects of the HP Synergy, HPE Synergy system, but I want to keep in mind for that your software solutions are really what's important here. So whether you're running bare metal or whether you're running virtualized or whether you're running containerized, we really want your software solutions to run the best on Synergy systems. And that's really our goal. Now, what we're going to do today is we're going to look at the hardware. We're going to look at the front side and get some information. Then we're going to look at the back side and look at some information of a typical Synergy type system. But keep in mind through all this, the software is what's important. Let's take a look inside this typical rack and see what's in here. This is a somewhat typical rack setup. What you're looking at here is the basic Synergy 12,000 frame which sets in a 10U package. Below it is another Synergy 12,000 frame, another 10U package. Below that is another 10U package, which is our older C system, blade system, C7000 system. All these are bladed infrastructure for the data center. Now we're gonna concentrate on this package, what we call the HPE Synergy 12,000 frame. This is the basic unit of Synergy that uh, most people would be looking at purchasing and they would expand this into to more units as they want to expand their data center. At the heart of this particular Synergy system is something we call HPE Composer. And this sits in a management bay on the left-hand side. This is actually the brains of the system. There is one bay here and below it there's another bay. This one happens to be empty, which could be for an HPE image streamer system. Uh, and we'll talk about what these are. These are management appliances. Now what's important about the Composer is you cannot run HPE Synergy without the Composer. This is the brains and it runs HPE OneView. This is very important because HPE OneView is what allows us to translate hardware resources into software resources that can be used by the software applications. Remember, this is a software-driven world. So whether you're using the GUI for system administration and running your solutions, or whether you're running all the, the solutions on a Synergy system from another application they will, and going through a RESTful API, they will be working through HPE OneView. We would claim that HPE OneView is what allows us to do composable management, composing compute and storage and networking and even software images in order to match hardware resources quickly to the software solutions that you need to run. So the game is compose the hardware resources quickly and efficiently to run your solutions, change them quickly, and continue to run in a manner that fits your data center. Now in this particular case, this entire package that we call Synergy, this frame, it's very important to understand that this is entirely designed for redundancy and high availability. We want this hardware system to stay up and running as much as possible, as long as possible, so that you can run your software solutions efficiently and effectively without downtime. So Composer is the main brains of the system. Typically, you would have one Composer in one frame, and we would typically have another Composer in a second frame, such as this one down here, and we do this for redundancy. This is a hardware failover model. Should I lose one of these composers, it would automatically fail over to run on the other composer. With these two composer management appliances, we can run up to 21 frames with just those two composers. Now, what are we gonna run? So one of the typical things that you would have in a frame like this are compute modules or servers, if you will. Here what you see, is a typical Synergy 480 compute module. This is a two processor module with 24 DIMM slots. This is a very effective package of what most people would typically use. You can have a lot of cores for running compute tasks. Keep in mind also that you could also put graphics processing units or GPUs in with these systems also, and that would allow you to do graphic tasks such as VDI, for example, for video de desktop interfaces. And uh, we have a very high density, among the highest density of GPU capabilities with Synergy. Over 700 uh, concurrent users in this 10U package could be uh, for, for VDI or graphics purposes. This is what we call a compute module. This fits in what we call a half height slot. And if you count the number of slots we have here, we would have one, 
two, there were three, four, this is occupying two, we'll talk about this in a minute, five, six, and then another six down here. So you have a 12, what we call 12 half height slots. So you could have up to 12 of these servers running in one 10U frame. So 12 servers in a 10U package is what we call it. Now, keep in mind also, there are other types of servers we have. And in fact, down here, you see some of these. This is actually a Synergy 680 of a Gen 9 variety, which runs actually more compute and more memory for more demanding tasks. And this one actually takes up four half byte slots. There's actually one here that's a single uh, that's, a, that's a single server, which takes two half byte slots. Typically today, you would either run a 480, such as one of these in a half byte, or a 660, which will run two slots for more demanding applications in the compute area. Now we're gonna move up and take a look at this module right here. This is a specialized module, which is a storage module. We call it the D3940 storage module. This allows us to do composable storage. What you have here is actually a tray of disk drives. These are hot pluggable disk drives. And if you look at the side, you can see individual disk drives. And this is only has 10 disk drives in it, but in reality, you could put up to 40 small form factor disk drives in this one storage module. Now think about that for a minute. That would allow you to put up to, let's say two terabytes per, per disk drive times 40 slots, that would allow you to put 80 terabytes of storage into these two half byte slots. These disk drives for the storage module can then be allocated to servers for use uh, in, the, in whatever solution they're running. Now this is very important because this allows us to carve up storage for use as the workloads need. It allows us to compose the storage to the workload. Keep in mind if you have VSA software, virtualization storage array software, you could actually share this, these disk drives across to other frames also. The other thing that's important to note is if you, for example, were using these 40 slots with two terabytes each or 80 terabytes total in that package, you could actually extend that and put in multiple of these modules in a single frame. Here we have a single module in this frame. We could put up to one, two, three, four, five of these storage modules in a single frame. And we could still have two compute modules there for use by your solution. If you need that much storage locally, this is a tremendous amount. So 80 times five, you're talking about half a petabyte of storage potentially. With larger disk drives, it could even be more. For some types of applications, this is very beneficial for a very large storage nearby to where the compute modules are. Now keep in mind, you also have other storage options. For example, a, a three-par storage array is a very typical SAN storage array that we would put with a Synergy system. Nimble storage. You could also use storage that comes from other vendors. The one thing you would sacrifice is the, the composability of that storage, but you can certainly run of the typical storage of other vendors also with a Synergy system. You're not limited in that, in that respect. I'd like to stop for a minute and look at a few other things here. We have front panel access for Synergy here, should a system administrator need that. We also have another piece of this puzzle, which is actually not shown here, but would fit into this other management appliance bay. We talked about Image Streamer. Image Streamer is a specialized function. It looks like the composer, but it actually is another management appliance which works with the, the composer management appliance. Its specialized function is to rapidly deploy and update your solutions. And what that allows you to do is do some things with the software images and run statelessly in a way that we have not been able to achieve before. Speed is a key here. So one of the ways people do that is to add capacity quickly to a running solution add another compute module, bring online, update software quickly for security reasons. Another way they would use an image streamer type solution is for what we would call workload swapping or workload switching. You can think about this in terms of what happens during a day of a data center. Say during the day, you have all the compute modules of your Synergy frame running VDI for video teleconferencing for say a call center. At five o'clock, the call center closes down, the people go home. 
we then use Image Streamer to repurpose all the compute modules with a different workload, see a computationally heavy task like database work. And it runs all night on computationally heavy tasks. In the morning, the call center people return, the Image Streamer repurposes all the compute modules back to VDI for video teleconferencing. This allows us to make very effective use and efficient use of our hardware re resources in a way that we could not do before. Keep in mind that I showed this as a day-night type problem. In reality, Image Streamer is much quicker than this. We could repurpose our workloads as fast as we can reboot servers, could, could, so it could be a matter of minutes that we do this. Now, we've talked about a lot of things here. Keep in mind that the brains of the system runs HP OneView. This is a, a capability which maps the hardware resources to software, logical software constructs. So we can understand compute, storage, networking, even software images for the most powerful profiles and templates in the industry, which allows us then to use a RESTful interface and allow other software to come in and run this system and run their workloads, possibly without even touching other interfaces, going straight from a one application in straight into the RESTful APIs into the Synergy systems and run the workloads efficiently. Now, previously we were looking at the front side of the Synergy rack. Now we're going to turn around and look at the back side of the Synergy rack. Now there's a little more noise back here because we have fans blowing back here. But one of the first things you'll notice on the back side of the rack is the lack of cables. One of the advantages of the blade system infrastructure is the cable management is so much cleaner than that of a rack structure uh, for data center stuff. So there's a few cables, but it's a much cleaner environment. Now, looking at the back side of the rack, it may be more difficult to recognize. Here's one of the frames we talked about earlier, and here's the second frame below it. You'll notice that this looks very similar to the older systems we had in Blade System also. And one of the reasons is we learn from our older infrastructure, and some of it's very similar. So we have modular fans, in this case, 10 fans, and we have six power supplies. And these are set up to be redundant, so we could actually lose one. One of the subtleties of the Synergy infrastructure is that this has a much more efficient power and cooling infrastructure than previous generations. And that's very important because as we move forward, all the, the different components of the system, the processors, the memory, the storage is running hotter. So having a more efficient power and cooling infrastructure is very important as we go forward. One of the other things you will see here is you will see actually three independent and redundant uh, interconnect modules. So this is for moving data. And so, for example, if you look carefully, you'll see the top one, which runs the full width of the Synergy frame. The redundant one is below it. And then you have a second redundant interconnect module. And finally, a third redundant interconnect module. Remember, everything is designed in the hardware for redundancy and high availability. So you might be using these, for example, for connecting a fiber channel or ethernet or fiber channel over ethernet. In this particular case, we are running an interconnect module we call Virtual Connect from a Hewlett Packard Enterprise. This is a very efficient, resilient, and very effective way of moving data. In this particular case, we have one of the master satellite modules up in the first frame and a redundant one in the second frame so that we have failover cap capabilities. This allows us to actually link different frames together for data purposes and make it look like a single switch to a top of rack switch. This actually has no aggregation and, very, and no latency also. And I can link up to five different frames this way for data purposes. One of the other capabilities that's a subtlety of this architecture that's very important is something we call the frame link module. And if you look carefully, you see a couple wires going into this little piece on the left-hand side. This frame link module does several things. It is really a resource manager for the frame. One of the things it will do is it will automatically discover all the resources in the frame. So when you first attach the wires and the power cables for a Synergy, and you flip on the power switch, the frame link module will go out and it will look at all attached frames and it will discover all the resources and present those to you in HP OneView. We also have an installation technician mode, which allows an installation tech or possibly a contractor to have access to what he needs to to correctly identify the physical configuration. 
it will identify incorrect cable configurations, for example, and show them in red so that he knows to correct those and where to correct those. Once he has corrected all those, the resources are all presented now correctly in green in HP One View. He can turn that over to a software administrator who has full access to the power of the software for setting up the logical structures of the software. One of the other things that the FrameLink module does is it will provide you your management links up into your management network. An important aspect of this particular FrameLink module is that it separates the data from the management networks. This is really important. This allows us to prevent denial of service attacks, which are caused when you try to overflow from data on one side into the other side to gain control of a management network. So separation of the data in the management networks is very important. It's also called out-of-band management. This is a very important aspect that the FrameLink module allows. And as its name it suggests, the FrameLink module links frames. So there's a link port that allows us to daisy chain from one frame to another frame. And this linking capability allows us to link up to 21 frames, still only using two composers for managing all that but that is one of the capabilities. So I can link up to 21 frames with 12 compute modules each at this point in time. Now keep in mind, all these capabilities are designed really to run software and solutions. We have a lot of capabilities that we provide that you cannot see in hardware. For example, we provide Synergy software releases. These are tested solutions of software that allow you to actually run the software and be assured that they've been tested as solutions together so that you have stable systems running. We also have things like Insight Remote Support capability. The remote support allows you to have phone home capabilities should that be of interest to you. To identify potential failures in hardware before they happen and get them repaired. Or you can access them remotely. We have ILO Advanced capabilities, which allow you to have remote console access to even situations where the server may be down. In many cases, many of the system administrators are remote from the physical system. So having the remote capabilities of ILO Advanced, for example, or remote support are very important in the data center environment. Now we've been talking about Synergy, and this is the backside. We've been talking about hardware, but keep in mind, this is composable management at its best. We use extremely powerful HP OneView uh, templates and profiles to manage compute, storage, networking, and even software images, and to be able to match up the software solutions that you want to run with the hardware resources and quickly compose and recompose those so that your data center runs both efficiently and effectively to make your business a success. We thank you for this. Hope to see you soon.